Next item in the agenda is a vending contract. Um, we currently use classic vending and that was re that was established three years ago that went out to bed. Um, as you can see, we're recommending another three year uh, extension. We also, if you look under the costs, we've done an analysis on what we're paying Pepsi and the commission we're receiving. And we're looking to, we proposed a classic vending to, if they were able to cover both cold drinks and our vending. Um, <coughs> will they match the commission percentage on the cold drink machines? And they're also going to give us a signing bonus of $3,500. We talked about this with the, a little bit with the Finance Advisory Council as well. There was one question submitted, I believe, by Mr. Walsh. Um, you know, they wanted to make sure uh, that we're just not giving extensions and not missing opportunities to go out and rebid to make sure we're getting the best deal. Um, I, I just want to comment to that a little bit, and I, I will allow, obviously, the board member has the right to comment, but. I think with the budget you're seeing tonight and the facilities rental agreement and what we've done with Quest and what we've done with Aramark and what we're done with transportation, if I don't think we're getting a good deal or I don't think we're getting a service, um, I do scrutinize, scrutinize these contracts with Tim and I do scrutinize Tim a lot, Tim McGinnis, my CFO, um, when these things are up. I do. <laughs> but I, 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 I don't, I wouldn't bring something to you if I didn't think we were worth going back out there. So when it came time for this being up, the first thing that came to mind is, how's our service? Are we receiving our checks? Are we having any issues? All that came back positive. Then the second thing was, we've had, you know, are we really, is it worth having Pepsi in here for four machines? Is this something that this guy can pick up and can it increase our revenue? Can it increase? And as you see, we have an opportunity to have one vendor coming in, receive one set of checks, and we got a signing bonus out of it. So, um, Similar to what we've done with Quest, and I followed the same format to be consistent. So I don't want you to think it's just kind of a, uh, a, a narrow-minded, hey, let's roll it over because we haven't had any problems. We do scrutinize and, and, and scrub these things pretty good. Um, and I do take the feedback I receive on previous contracts and try to implement it to all. So I, I'll just tell you, it's a personal bias I have from experience. I, was the, you know the head of purchasing for years, and I do person agreements all the time, and I say the same thing. Of, you know, we're a five billion dollar company. Unless you go out and find out what people are willing to pay there, you just don't know. That doesn't mean I'm not suggesting this is a bad deal. I'm not suggesting you're picking a bad vendor. I mean, maybe the next guy would say we'll write you a five thousand dollar check if you, you know, or something like that. So, uh, and I know it's a lot of work, and you have a lot of other work you have to do, but. You know, if you look in a series, we did the same thing with Quest. We're doing it here. I mean, we tend to, uh, it, it went out on bids on, on transportation, for instance, because so it, I'm not suggesting we do it all of them, but, you know, it, there is a natural tendency not to want, when you're happy with somebody and you feel like you're doing a good deal, to stay with them because it's always a pain doing it. But you really can't know for sure what's available out there without, uh, you know, seeing what other people are willing to provide service for. that That's all I'm saying is a general comment. I'm not faulting or suggesting this is a bad deal for the school district. No, but I, I totally agree with what you're saying, though. I mean, I think every single contract we should at least think about it and ask the question. I will tell you something right now. I was involved with the first three years ago, comparing what we had before three years ago to now, and even part of the bidding process. I worked with uh, Walt Chris Walton on it. This is night and day, and this is way better than what we ever had before. So, and I talked to people about that are using vending services and this classic vending. I haven't heard anything bad from outside other uh, people. All right. Uh, uh, I'd like to say, so okay. as a board member, I think we should have a policy that every three years or so we should put out a proposal, an RFP, and to see if we are getting the best cost because we do have a habit. People we like, we keep. People we don't like, we go out for bids. We've what done that with the architects, but we like the cafeteria, so we keep them. What is the criterion? If you like somebody, you keep them. You don't know if there's anything better. If they are truly the best, we'll keep them. But I think every three years, it should just be standard policy. Put out a proposal, and if they can have the best price, then we keep them. Okay. I, I think two year, three years as a mandatory rebid is too short of a time. 
What is, what is the policy, Tim? Isn't there a there is limit? No, there is no policy. Anything over 25000 25000 yeah, right. It's yeah. not an a, a instructional needed service like copying or IT, something like so, that. So what are we talking about annual revenues on these vending machines? Oh, so what are you worth two hundred dollars. The twenty-five thousand doesn't apply to this at all because we're not spending any money. Right. No, it's, it's only right. where we spend over twenty-five. But I try to bring everything to. No, no, no. I, I'm suggesting that I just want to make sure people understand where it's something where we're in essence bringing in revenue. You don't the twenty-five thousand. If we brought a hundred thousand dollars in revenue, we don't have to bid it out. Right. It's where you're spending the money that there's a. Correct. Just remember, we don't own the equipment. Yeah. They put the uh, thing in. But we you just don't take know a if we could be getting a better deal because you like them and you won't go out and see if there is a better deal. If they were truly the best deal, you'd keep them. I have very uh, strong confidence with our management and administration staff that yeah, and if I, they I, didn't feel that we were getting the best deal, they wouldn't present this right now. Right, Tim, but, man, it's just a matter of checks and balances. I mean, right, I would think the board We just would, can't rubber stamp. I, that, that, hence my opening dialogue of... He I would hope after two two years and seeing what I've done with the finances it. and the operations well, here, I'm not rubber stamping anything. No. <laughs> all right, do I have a motion on this, please? Because you got Tim checking on you all the time. <laughs> do I have a motion on this, please? Resolved that the Board of Education, Township High School District 2A, Cook County, <laughs> Illinois, hereby approves the extension of the contract with Classic Vending through August 2016 and convert the cold drink machines to Classic Vending for a signing bonus of 3500 do I have a second? Second. Second by who? Tim Walsh. Marianne? Ms. Ruska? No. Mr. Jepson? Yes. Dr. King? Yes. Mr. Walsh? Yes. Mr. Welch? Yes. Mr. Gritchen? Yes. Mr. Cindy? Yes.